I try to avoid making videos that are seasonal because they take time to create and by the time I've edited the photos and video, everyone is already a bit tired of the subject. I am talking about seasonal crops mainly, such as bluebells, poppies, sunflowers, etc. But there are also occasions such as storms, fireworks and other seasonal events that just date a video, which I try to avoid. But this year the weather seems to have confused all of the crops and they're blooming at unexpected times. Bluebells are still lingering around at the same time as wild garlic, plus the weather forecast was looking promising, so I couldn't resist heading out to shoot my local woodland. Well, good morning, look at this beautiful scene. Every single bluebell season is quickly followed up by wild garlic, and this morning I've actually got a bit of both. So two weeks ago, I would have been making a video about bluebells, and this week, two weeks later, wild garlic. Oh, I already seem to have got a bit of a sweat on. Man, it's early, it's a bit clammy, but the good thing is there's actually quite a lot of misty haze fog lying around, so I wanna get some photographs before I distract myself too much with making this video. The master of woodland photography, Jamie Fielding, has just arrived behind the camera, so maybe he's gonna be in the video. Now this is roughly what the composition is, although it's probably not gonna be as wide on the photograph. You can see here we've got this path leading through lots of wild garlic and this is my third year running now the first year it was quite dense wild garlic last year i came and stood in the exact same spot put the photograph side by side and i realized last year's crop wasn't so great this year seems to be pretty good although this area here does not look very dense uh, this year's weather is very odd because actually there are a couple of bluebells scattered around they were not here last year but essentially I'm just making sure that I refine this composition because if I turn the camera to the left, you'll see there's a tree there. You've also got some trees with markings on. And these markings have been here for a couple of years. I suspected that they were gonna be taking these trees out, but they are still here. So that's good news. Um, but essentially I just end up Photoshopping out some of these markings on the trees, uh, but that's a nice and easy fix. So here's the situation. I just spoke with Jamie Fielding and there are five other photographers here and I'm still stood here. Everyone's quickly taken a photograph of this scene and they're working their way down the hill because that's where the most amount of fog is. Uh, and obviously when you're shooting woodland, mist and fog, ah, oh, it's the perfect conditions. I need to get this shot in the bag though. There is a little bit of haze around and if you're not familiar with woodland photography, essentially haze kind of just simplifies the scene. If there isn't any haze in the background. You can see all the way to the far depth of the wood when you've got mist and fog it's kind of like having a soft white canvas behind your trees and it just draws the attention to your actual trees and your foreground so here's the scene I've got I've cropped in a little bit I am currently shooting at 50 millimeters using the Sony a7 III and the Sony 20 to 70 millimeter and uh, yeah here is that photograph Now my objective with today's video was to really nail this composition because I've been here, like I said before, I've already got a nice photograph in the portfolio. When I say portfolio, I keep hold of the photographs for months and months and months. And then occasionally I just go through them on my iPad and then I think that's good enough to go on the website. And then sometimes I just take an image off my website so that it doesn't get too cluttered. It's kind of like a filing system. One new one comes in the top, something's got to give, an old one comes out the bottom. Now you can see here I've got my camera uh, positioned vertically. Now this composition kind of lends itself to vertical because you've got the path leading through and the trees are quite tall. But the problem with that is you're then including a bit too much sky which is too bright and contrasty. So ideally you're cutting out the sky when you're doing woodland. So that's what I'm battling with at the moment. I'm just trying to get a good vertical composition that doesn't include the sky. So another challenge that I've got here is that some of these trees have overhanging branches and they're kind of in the foreground. It's a bit of a distraction. And even though I'm shooting at F11, sometimes they may not be in focus. I don't particularly want to do focus stacking here today, um, but I think that this has just got enough sky not to be a distraction, but the composition works really well. So happy with that. Like I said, the mist is further down the hill. That's where everybody else is. So I'm gonna stop talking and then I'm gonna get some more photographs. Just 
just wow, look at this. This is incredible. And just behind the camera, oh God, I've got to, I've got to show you this. Just behind the camera as I was filming, I've got incredible sunlight coming up. It looks a bit mad on the camera. I don't think people will believe it is real. <laughs> it's amazing, doesn't it? I don't know if my camera can possibly capture what's happening right here, but I'll give it a go. Engage panic mode. <laughs> you, got, you got all the light rays and everything coming through the haze. A stunning scene and I hope that I have done it some justice. Look, I've got three layers of colour and just a hint of that light on oh, That's really Which nice. Lighten up a bit actually. What a lovely morning to be out. <laughs> See you later. Okay, uh, Jamie's taken off. Um, but I have to say, whenever I've been to this particular woodland three times now, I've never actually had direct sunlight. So this is really nice. The weather prediction for once was bang on. And if you could smell this, this is amazing. <sighs> you know, and I don't think I've actually made a video before where I've got bluebells and wild garlic in them at the same time. I don't think I've ever been to a wood where I'd say that these bluebells are coming to the end of their life, but they're both properly out at the same time. I did have a really stupid idea for the video today, which I've not seen through. I thought, would it be funny if I was in a wild garlic woodland eating garlic olives? Because I love garlic olives. And then I thought to myself, do I really want a whole tub of garlic olives at six o'clock in the morning? And then I bailed on the idea. Quite fancy some olives now, though. Now, I know quite a few local photographers, especially landscape photographers, and sometimes you recognize their name, and sometimes you recognize their face from their profile picture and things. This morning, I met a gentleman called Ian Briley, who I'd never met in person before, but I had messaged him. And the reason I contacted him is because I was watching a video by Nigel Danson where they, well, where he critiques other photographers' work. They submit it and he gives you some feedback. And Ian sent him a photograph of this exact woodland with wild garlic. And Nigel Danson was essentially just envious. He said, I wish I had this photograph in my portfolio, which is the best sort of feedback you can get. So Ian, if you're watching this, lovely to meet you. And if you're not really following Ian, uh, I'll put a link to his social media below. And I was kind of tempted not to make this video and just come out and take some photographs because I see bluebells, poppies, sunflowers, wild garlic, all those kind of photographic fads. And I made a video about this last year. I called it staying relevant. If you're in the photographic community, you just see the same photographs coming up and up again and again and again on your social media. And I am adding to that. However, three years ago, I'd never photographed wild garlic before. And at first glance, you might think, oh, it's snow because it's so dense. It's like a blanket of white. And I think it looks beautiful. Um, you, some people may not appreciate this sort of photography, but I think for those of you that have never photographed wild garlic, do a bit of research online and find out where you can photograph it because it really is quite nice. If you've enjoyed this video, then I would recommend watching this one next. It's about woodland photography and how I struggle with it. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.